So our next speaker is uh, Professor Jenny Weller, who's an anesthetist in uh, Auckland City Hospital and heads the Center for Medical Education in the School of Medicine at Auckland University. Uh, she leads a national multidisciplinary simulation-based uh, team training programs for surgical teams. Uh, funded by the uh, Accident Compensation Corporation, this is uh, being introduced into all of New Zealand public hospitals. So, Jenny? Thank you, Ken. Thank you for uh, saying that mouthful about um, the project that I'm leading, which is, is sort of the topic of my talk today. Um, so, um, sim I think gone are the days that uh, uh, we can consider ourselves as the all-knowing, all-powerful God doctors. I think healthcare today is delivered in teams and in today's context, that might also include machines. Um, so I think uh, these non-technical skills that are involved in teamwork are something that we can potentially um, learn using simulation, and these uh, may definitely impact on our ability to deliver good patient care and probably also affect uh, uh, the uh, experience of our teammates over the course of the day. So the problem that uh, we were setting out to address is um, unsafe surgical care. So, um, and this is, the pro this is the issue that got ACC interested in, in our program. So about 30 million of new and existing claims in 2017 <laughs> in New Zealand, and about over 7,000 related to injuries in patients undergoing surgery in public hospitals in the last five years. Around half of these perioperative adverse events are considered avoidable, and a lot, of this, a lot of these are put down to failures in teamwork and communication. It's an important contributing factor that we're all well aware of. So increasingly, um, there's been quite a lot of in, in, uh, investment in this area over the last few decades and increasingly we've got enough, uh, we've got more and more evidence and this meta-analysis um, from Hughes uh, coming out in 2016 uh, produced quite a con compelling case that team training does save lives and also um, in terms of patient outcomes, deaths uh, and also in terms of processes and efficiencies so some very good evidence now coming out that team training does um, have an impact. And this, uh, s this um, review by Salas, um, Transforming Healthcare One Team at a Time, and uh, he's, a, he's a real um, strong advocate in the, in the uh, field for team training, and his review, his systematic review, pointed at simulation as one of the key players in this field of team training. So if you uh, think about the operating room, which is where I come from, and probably some of you have experienced, uh, um, have experience of, we tend to uh, think of ourselves in somewhat distinct groups, nursing, surgeons, anaesthetists. Um, we tend to focus on our own tasks rather than the whole task, whole team, team task. We, we may not even know each other's names, in fact. We may not have a shared goal. Sometimes we may even indulge in negative stereotyping about each other's tribe, which is terribly unhelpful in terms of uh, negotiating best patient care. Our program is modelled on this uh, empirical evidence produced by Salas on what the features are of effective teams. I'll just let you have a look at that for a minute. These, these are probably not, well, they're certainly not unique for surgical teams, and you can think about them in your own context and the extent to which your own clinical teams or organisational teams fulfil these uh, behaviours. So this was the sort of the theoretical framework for our program. We've called it Networks. It's a national program, as I said, ACC-funded to a significant extent. It's a one-day simulation-based course, um, it's uh, got debriefs, uh, the usual stuff, learning from collective experience, taking it back to practice, importantly. 
We also focus on communication skills um, around briefings, timeouts, structured recaps, speaking up, closed loop. An opportunity really for the teams to get together in these debriefs and really explore each other's perspectives, get to understand each other's roles and uh, build some relationships. We've created um, these simulations with bespoke surgical models, quite fun working with um, Medic FX, um, who are rather, in, rather enjoying building these models. We've integrated them with um, 3G Simulator, the Laodil Simulator. Our aim is, is really for psychological fidelity. So these, these, um, these models are not the sort of thing that you would learn um, how to do an anastomosis with, but they're, um, uh, but they're, they're, they're there to elicit the sort of behaviours that we want around team interactions and, and management of the case. So our aim is, is really psychological fidelity. So the, the cases are set up so that they elicit the behaviours and interactions with team members that we can then explore. So to, uh, to, to increase this sort of fidelity, that these are based on real patients, we've got real notes, they've got an ID, they're real people. They need, they've got lab results, they need cross matches. If you get the wrong blood, they'll have a reaction to it. They bleed and you have to stop the bleeding. The fidelity is increased by running it in situ. So it's in your own theatre with your own team and you can look at your own system responses in your uh, theatre. So this is the way we're implementing this somewhat ambitious uh, program. It's a national implementation. It's been a stepped rollout across the DHBs. Um, DHBs are supplied with a uh, 3G simulator and the models. Um, and it's a, st a standardised course package and a, tr and a training program and a, a resource for running the training. The idea is um, for these the uh, local teams to be developing their own skills in running the course. So it's a sort of a train the trainers model. So we have an instructor training program. We run, we start with supporting the courses and gradually they run by the, by the local teams. Our goal is uh, simulation based team training established as business as usual across the DHBs, district health boards. And this is the sort of design five DHBs at a time um, over the over the course of about four years. So looking at evaluations for this, we're, we're certainly needing some evidence to support the sustainability of this program. With the stepped wedge cluster design, uh, we think we can um, potentially uh, show a difference. Our primary outcome is patients, uh, patient outcome, uh, looking at days alive and out of hospital um, from our existing um, quite reliable um, national minimum data set. We're also looking at the ACC claims database and post-op complications. Um, there is, of course, measures on a culture and process um, across, the, across the teams with end of course evaluations. Um, looking at quality of administration of the checklist, because we think these sort of different attitudes towards the importance of shared information may actually get people to engage more in the, in the, in the surgical safety checklist. We've got various surveys of teamwork perceptions, culture, and um, also staff interviews. Um, we, uh, we've, um, I think one of the important bits of an outcome so far, um, this is uh, our sort of coming into our third year. We're starting on the third cohort, third out of four. It does seem to have pretty good uptake. I think my numbers might not quite add up, but um, the, um, there's been more more training occurring this year, but we've got really quite good uptake of the course. All, all of the DHBs that we've been to um, have introduced the training, so it's um, it's being taken up, and people are, are engaging in the program. And we've got a lot of interest in instructors wanting to train on the program. Our course evaluations are, are um, incredibly positive, um, both for our instructor courses and for our um, participant courses. This is the sort of train, training groups that we're getting. You can see it's representative, really, of the um, composition of the operating room with surgeons, anaesthetists, techs, um, healthcare assistants there too. Um, just touch on some of the data that we're getting out. Some of the um, post-course reports are quite interesting around the changes that are occurring in the um, workplace. 
um, people are starting to sort of realise or um, the importance of knowing people's names um, and the importance of briefings. And we've ha actually had some success at introducing briefings in places that were quite resistant to the idea of having a briefing before a surgical um, list. Um, people have identified gaps in their knowledge and gone off and taken training. Um, people have clarified the roles. For example, um, uh, I guess uh, we didn't, as anaesthetists, didn't always know that the, the structure of the nursing roles within the theatre and, and how, how formal that actually is. So that's been really helpful in understanding other people's roles and perspectives. There's been uh, quite a lot of issues identified in systems. So um, uh, people may not know the there's a crisis management algorithm in the theatre and that was news to them and very helpful because then you, rather than the sort of, I guess the traditional surgical response to an anaphylaxis would be, this isn't, you know, this isn't something I can help with and to stand back. Um, but they now have the ability to, to, to get hold of the al algorithm and read out what needs to happen next so it can be very much more an active participant and that's what they're doing. Um, it's also uh, identified some systems issues like broken equipment. We had one place that uh, had a defibrillator that only worked if you plugged it in, which is a bit of a problem in a critical uh, um, cardiac arrest. Um, and following the course, that was identified and they got a new defibrillator. So stuff like that. Um, some various, you know, the systems issues that you would expect, like uh, people didn't know where stuff was, uh, multiple places for different things. So things are being discovered and fed back into the QI system. Um, some of the we've we've gone gone on one round of interviews with the first cohort, and it it some interesting stuff coming out. Um, the existing culture in a place does really uh, influence the extent to which that this this is taken up and how it influences behaviour. Um, but it's also having some sort of an influence on the culture in the place. Um, there's a strong motivation for people that are instructing on the course to keep doing it. They feel like it's making a difference is with local evidence to support change in practice. It does require um, structural resources um, and infrastructure support. I mean, support from senior management is actually critical and the implementation piece of this is really quite a huge part of this strategy. Just one, one, um, one quotes on one theme around the culture. People are happier to speak up, they're happier to raise a concern. I get, get a feeling that it improves theatre morale. So I guess speaking to that concept of um, making, it, making this a better place to work, more engaged clinicians, more valuing of staff members. It's created a lot of talk about things that can go better and I think it has improved relationships around the place. So um, just to summarise, I think uh, the, the key points about this, this simulation-based strategy to in, enhance our so-called non-technical skills, I think the fact that it's a national initiative, it's unique in that an opportunity for the whole team to get together and this is actually not such an easy thing. We tend to do our CPD separately and getting everybody together at the same time is a challenge and this uh, implementing this in, in our DHBs with the support of senior management has been one, uh, one I think of one of the, the big uh, pluses of this, of this program. Um, I think it's world leading um, in terms of its focus on um, surgical fidelity not so much, as I said, in the in the technical aspects of surgery, but in the fidelity of bringing the whole team together and eliciting um, the responses, the behaviours that they would normally do in terms of interacting with each other and with the case. It's based on evidence from the literature and increasing our own evidence from the work we're doing. Um, and running it in situ seems to be um, uh, have real payoffs. So I think it is... Um, a way of improving team non-technical skills. I think it's starting to have some potential impact on culture in the uh, workplace in our operating theatres and it's helping us to identify so uh, some systems issues. So I think um, our, our goal is to establish simulation team training as business as usual across DHBs, not just in the OR, it's starting to be taken up 
in the ED as well and um, beyond. And I think uh, it's only one way of, uh, use, of de delivering team training, but I think simulation does definitely have something to contribute uh, to make um, the lives of our patients and our staff members better. Thank you.